Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to today's video. Let's see if I remember how to do this. I am very excited to sit down and chat with you today around the law, a divine law of reciprocity. And this has been something I've been um, deeply cultivating within myself over the last, um, since the last summer solstice. I'd say a good nine months that this work has been incubating in me. And I'm only mentioning that because of the weight of this lesson and the, you know, the diamond that's really been forming and all the different facets of this conversation around recipro reciprocity and, and how that's been, um, yeah, it's just been really becoming more and more and more clear, crystal clear. Maybe you're also finding that you are in a place where you're realizing that reciprocity and leaning in to reciprocity and learning more about reciprocity as women is very important because as women we're built we're physically built to be quite receptive right and very magnetic our womb is um almost, you know, like there's like this black hole essence and um, behavior that our womb has. It's this very, very magnetic portal um, of receptivity. And it's quite a lot of power as women and a lot of power to be with, to be with it, to sit with it, to understand it and to know it. With reciprocity and this divine law of reciprocity, what I have been finding is a total dismantling of this idea of taking on life alone or by myself. And that that is always showing me when I, when I approach life as if I'm going to do it on my own, I can do this on my own. I don't need help. I can handle it. I can do it. I can hold it all by myself, right? This kind of uh, almost twisted, like be a big girl kind of thing. I always falter and I always fall to my knees <laughs> and pray that I don't want to do it like this anymore. I don't want it to be like that. It's not natural as women who are really tuning in with our divine feminine essence. It, it is not natural to approach life with that perspective i will stand by that all day I'll, I'll argue that blue in the face that that is not um that is not a well woman who is um feeling the need to approach life that way and that is not a judgment that is a uh, i am speaking from lived experience statement because it's it's not a way that as society especially in america um, and maybe wherever you are as well, if you're not in America, but I know just especially here, um, we are not brought up to feel comfortable with having desires. Um, it's not something that is really allowed to be in a healthy, um, calm, nervous system, stabilized kind of state. Desires and longings and yearnings are really equivalent with some sort of um, something that's wrong with you or something that, yeah, something that is, you know, we've been taught that that's maybe not natural or not wholesome. And I want to really assure you that it is. And I would also encourage you to become curious when and where in your life have you been told that your desires and yearnings and the things that you would like to create in order to celebrate them, because that's really, you know, we can, we can throw out the divine feminine playlist that I've made, you know, two years ago and really distill it to simply this is that the divine feminine essence it wants to celebrate. We want to celebrate life as women. That is, um, or as beings in the embodiment of the divine feminine, I'll say. So celebration of our desires being completed with care, 
which is the divine masculine, right? That beautiful infinity loop and patterning of human behavior in a divine way. So let me back up. Let me actually just paint that picture for you a bit more clearly. Here, in my opinion, and I, I've gone very deep um, in this with a with a spiritual teacher of mine and distilled it over months into really understanding what the divine feminine and divine masculine, like what is that? I've been on this quest for like 10 years to really find it and feel it and live it in this in this earthly life, not in some astral projection of what I hope to accomplish. I, I mean, I don't know, just I just want to experience in my life. I want to experience divine feminine and divine masculine moments in my everyday life. And what I have found is that the divine masculine chooses a task to be completed and he completes it with care and provides and you know um, provides the vision right and then the divine feminine the receptive divine feminine celebrates the completion with care and it's in that celebration that we are relaxed and we are receptive to the new vision to, to be planted, for those new seeds to be planted in our heart. And um, so all of that to say that this reciprocity and being receptive, um, it's so important to know how to celebrate life. And it's difficult to celebrate life if we don't have that divine masculine component happening regularly in our life. So we need both. So far in my life, I have found that to be the, um, the key to um, really keeping us in a safe place on this planet is divine union. It is, a, it is a consciousness that keeps us in a place of safety. It's a consciousness that keeps us in a place of hopefulness and joy and uh, faith, resilience, and strength, um, virtue. It, it, it really does. It anchors us into all of those beautiful virtues. And when we have that inner alchemy happening of a divine masculine aspect really anchored and turned on and a divine feminine really anchored and turned on, we create that inner alchemy of divine union, which we could see represented in the architecture of consciousness, which is the tarot and the lovers. This card, this uh, lover's medicine is something that really allows us to be honoring reciprocity as something very sacred and important for us to continue to pursue, especially as women. So as I've, you know, relaxed into this and as I've played with it, as I've lived it, as I've, um, you know, decided to come to you here in this video from lived experience of this, if there was one quality I would encourage you to explore in this season ahead. It is a deepening into reciprocity. So that starts with very simple decisions um, that in the moment can feel quite monumental or quite difficult. So for myself, I remember very clearly coming to the end of a journey of teaching in my daughter's classroom at the Waldorf Public School in our area. And I was not in this realm of reciprocity. I was completely turned inside out and very, very out of balance, not in any sort of harmonic to what I'm speaking to right now. And um, my hair was falling out. And um, I was having a very hard time getting out of bed. Um, 
really struggling with day-to-day -day activities. Um, my, my, I was so exhausted. It, it's like that chronic fatigue would really set into my bones and my body. And I knew I had to start taking care of myself. I, I was like, I knew that I couldn't keep going in that way. Um, but I didn't know how to shift it. Like I didn't know. I, I really had kind of reached that jaded point where I was like, well, I think I'm just going to continue to get older and just have to live this way or just like find a way to make peace with this lifestyle of chronic fatigue and be as graceful as I can but maybe I just need to accept it. But there was something inside of me that was like, no, that's not, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not it. And um, thank goodness uh, Healy came into my world. A friend told me about Healy and the microcurrent and getting, you know, just like ATP production back, like, like literally charging the cells in the body like a battery. And I've been really, you know, using it consistently now for like many months and I'm in a very different place and very grateful, very, very grateful. So that's been a, a tool to help me on all of these levels of physical energy and clear mental body, very receptive spiritual body and receptive physical body. And so that's been a really beautiful journey. I'm gonna link some more info um, below on that. Um, if you'd like to learn more about it, I really encourage you to, or send me some questions about it if those are coming up. Uh, we actually do have a beautiful call um, this coming Wednesday. If you'd like to tune in and learn more about um, this technology, it's really, it's really like very Aquarian age to me. And it has really broken me open to this understanding that reciprocity is, um, it is one of the massive divine laws that, that needs to be honored for life to be um, in balance. And this is so far removed from the way that we are being raised, the way that we are being conditioned. And um, so there's quite a lot that has needed to melt off of my psyche, of my mindset um, to come into this like comfy, cozy place of receiving and expanding. The, the receiving allowing me to expand so that I can show up and be my most authentic self and be relaxed. And I've never experienced life quite in that way. So it felt exciting to actually, you know, hop on here and create a video. And what I would love for you to explore is where are you in this journey with reciprocity? And if you feel Here's the, here's the juice. If you feel some heat or if you feel triggered, if you feel mad at me, if you feel like frustrated, right? I understand. And those are all really beautiful signals that there's something here <laughs> to deepen into. There's something here to explore. And there's, a, there's an invitation to stay observant and still with that and get curious and ask some questions ask really good questions um, and invite your higher guidance in to really help start to sort that out because i am determined at this point to really invite other women on this journey with me because i'm just getting started I am just waking up to this idea, to this consciousness. There are years ahead of me of expanding into a more authentic, um, divine, feminine embodiment and transmission that just becomes life. 
And I want to do that in community. I don't want to do that alone. I want to do that with other women who are on the path, other women who have gone through some pretty juicy initiations and know <laughs> that there's there's never a last one. <laughs> there's never one that it's like I was at a women's retreat um, that I was, it was so beautiful. My friend Bridget in Sedona, who you guys might know, she's a, you know, gorgeous YouTuber, just has the most incredible transmissions on her YouTube channel that have, um, really shifted in a beautiful way over the last few years. And so she's a, a friend of mine in Sedona invited me to this women's retreat to, um, do a ceremony there. And it was so fun. And one of the women um, in the ceremony was like, I hope it's the last time, right? Or something like that. Like, that was like a paraphrasing, but um, it was sort of this like, God, I just, I hope, you know, this is the last burning ceremony or like, I hope it's really, really done after this. And I had so much compassion for that feeling because that's the woman who is really doing the work. And of course, we all know that the answer is sort of like, no, it's, you know, there's other initiations ahead. There's other expanders coming always. Um, we know that, but it's so real to actually be in those fires, right, of the alchemy and to be, you know, to be sitting in the fire and um, not allow it to totally consume you, to allow it to change what needs to be changed and do go through that whole process of tempering. Um, and so um, so that is actually a, a beautiful segue into, um, I'm gonna be having a conversation um, that I think will be released around Mother's Day with, um, again, my, my beautiful soul sister, Sarah LaRosa, who is my tarot teacher and just a dear um, friend and teacher of mine. Um, we are going to be recording a transmission on temperance, which, um, again, I will, I will try to see if maybe I can gather like a little clip from that talk because anytime Sarah and I come together it's just it's so so powerful and uh lots to uh there's so much that comes through both of us that is is so beautiful I'm so happy to share it with you soon so that will be coming and um I just had a beautiful time sitting down together and I'm looking forward to doing more of these talks just on a personal logistical note, I've really been delegating and letting go of quite a lot um, in my life so that I can have a bit more spaciousness to create and to be creative. And right now, um, creativity for me, it looks like, you know, as I'm homeschooling the children, I'm really diving deeply into knitting and crochet and handwork and fiber arts. Um, I guess you can't see it. Oh, you can. I have my easel behind me always, you know, taunting me to come closer, but it's just not that season for me as the mamas can relate, at least in my house. Um, painting is, is not an activity with rambunctious, you know, little ones who have a lot of energy. Painting has not been in the flow, but handwork and fiber arts and knitting and creating clothing is absolutely in the mix because I can do that and have conversations and talk with the children. So if we do sit down in the future and I might have some knitting needles with me, um, it's because it's bringing me quite an, like, it just so much joy. And there's a whole transmission around weaving and knitting. And, you know, there's quite a lot there. Um, there's a reason that Rudolf Steiner was so encouraging of every child learning how to knit um, it's layered and it's beautiful. And I'm really receiving a lot of those downloads as the deeper I go into this practice of consistent knitting. It's been beautiful. So if that's something you'd like to hear more about, please comment and tell me, um, because it's a huge, you know, turn from what we usually talk about here on this channel, but, uh, life is really changing and presenting so many different very different um, avenues for me that are ahead. And 
I just want you to come along as authentically as possible. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love you so much. And I look forward to sitting to down together again soon.